We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are live. So come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right here, this is the channel where you can check out any highlights from the live. It's growing, actually. We got 30 new subs this month. It's only been 19 days. That's that's pretty good, man. It's pretty good, man. Uh, don't forget, we do got the merch as well. You feel me? Uh, we also got the Patreon. We watch Monday through Friday. And uh, we also got the Discord. Discord, man. Check us out on the Discord, man. It plays a vital role on KICK.com. <laughs> anyway, UK Teen Trappers. Exploring County Lines. This is by V4YAV Media. V4YAV Media. This is five years ago? God damn. Nevertheless, still want to watch. <laughs> what is county lands? What is drug dealing? What does it mean to trap? To be a trapper? What does OT mean? Country? What's happening on our streets of London? We're about to explore that in a documentary where we interview a series of different people with different perspectives and different viewpoints to get to the bottom of this trend that's on the rise in the capital. So follow me as we explore County Lands. Directed by Aaron Smith, Jermaine Laura, UK Team. Okay. Whilst there is no official definition, typical county line activity involves a gang usually made up of young males from a large urban area traveling to smaller locations such as county or coastal towns to sell class A paraphernalia, specifically these three things you see on the screen. <laughs> That's tough. So hold on, hold on. Let me see something real quick. I know... Let me see something. Hold on. Videos. 11 days ago. Okay, so they still posting. But they've clearly went away from what worked. You got to go. You got to do the documentary. The documentary worked. Get back to it, man. Whatever. V4, YAV Media. You know what the people want. Don't give us that bullshit that you, what I just seen. It might not be bullshit, but don't give it to us. We don't want it. <laughs> they want this. The majority of these gangs function with a degree of affiliation and loyalty. They may challenge an existing group from the local area or another county lines enterprise which often causes incidents of violence. I'm reading it out loud, for, I know some of y'all can't read, so I got y'all. Follow me as I venture to where it all begins, to the origins, to where it starts, as I explore county lands. I'm about to meet a gang, a notorious gang, Trappers, drug dealers, and they're about to explain what County Lines is and give us an insight into this growing epidemic in the capital. Yeah. Gangs typically exploit children to deliver from the urban to the county location using intimidation, violence, debt bondage, and or grooming. Adult, often addicts, <laughs> And vulnerable females are also exploited for their pro properties or to assist with dealing within the county market. You know what's crazy? When the teacher used to call on me to read, nah, I'm good. But now it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm probably one of the greatest readers to ever touch the internet. So thank you for taking the time to speak to me 
to talk about county lands and breaking that down. Yeah. What is county lands and what does that mean? What is, let's start with OT. What does it mean to go OT? OT means out there, isn't it? You know, anywhere away from your home. You know, selling drugs easily. You know, uh, if you go out there, more likely you're going to be selling crack and heroin. And where did you get that from? Where did you get crack and heroin from? Where did that come from? Different sources. Different sources, different areas. You know, True. like, obviously, now, now we look and say, well, right, the oldest there, but we get from people as well, you feel me? Yeah. So. And what kind of people are you getting it from? Gangster people, people that you wouldn't even expect, people in the seats. When you get a real big thing, like this thing here and whatnot. What thing, sorry? Like this here, you know, this is the key. It's coming in it? Yeah, 36 legs. 56,000 if you're broken down. Now, like, yeah. You know, if you're getting something like that. That's a kilo of cocaine? Nah, kilo of crack. Kilo of crack, and that's how much? How much is that worth? 56,000 when broken down. What, what does that mean, broken down into what? Broken down into little packs like this. This is about, well, I'd say, seven good. I ain't counted it, but. So, what is that there that you have? This is about seven good. This is what we call a pack. You know, what a pack is, is basically a mixture of heroin and crack. And, and, you know, and what you do, you take this up to your old team. Right, people always want to be, like, put a, put a belly on, like, put a push icedy. Why do you got this on? What is this? Who, t who, who would take it up to OT? Remember, I send up there, big man, little children, whatever. Young. 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 Like, how old would they be? Usually starting from about 15. Fif a 15 year old kid would take that up to OT country to sell? Yeah, I started at 15. You started at 15 years yeah. old? Yeah. Started what at 15? You were selling drugs? Yeah. Taking tax. Going up there. Selling and bringing back the cash. And, and what about your school teachers, your parents? What did your parents think? Your school teachers, was you, was you not going missing? Man, I know people that dropped out of high school at 15, 14. Not saying that I condone any of this YouTube. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, I've done it in the summer holiday team just after I left school. <laughs> oh, my God. Why do we have to do this? So, I've got a way of it, but... Most kids, yeah, don't disappear, innit? Because the money's real, innit? You know what I'm saying? What do you mean the money's real? In terms of the profit? It's, yeah, it's good money, innit? Can you break that down? What do you mean? Like, how much how, how much would that be? Seven bills. And how much could, and how much could you make? Seven bills on cocaine. Well, this is fact is seven bills, but this comes from uh, a Z. You know, what we call amps. You know, what's about 1,350, 1,400. You're not going to pay 1,500 for it. Anything between. Yeah, and then that's about two thousand eight hundred pound worth. You know, and you break it down to get that worth into ten pound shots, twenty pound shots, fifties, grams, you know. And then yeah. And, and and you know you said that a young person that's maybe fifteen years old takes that up to country, how do they take that? Where do they how do they carry that? They put it in the house. Yeah, they they you see the shape of it? That's crazy. If that goes in someone's ass. Plug it. Plug it. What does that mean? Because I've heard we, for, for for those who don't know what that term means, can you break down the word plug? It? What that means? Plug it. Plug it means put it up your ass. Simple. And do you do that? No anymore. I don't need to. So who does that now? The guys that send up the youngest. The youngest. That thing there. Yeah. The youngest on Sunday. Put use them to take it up there. Yo, the youngers are calm. They take it up. That's crazy. That's 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 a that's. Some... Yeah. And what if they say no? They don't want to do that. They can't work in that. If they say no, yeah, I'm never gonna bully them. Yeah, rule two, you want the rule. So, boom, I'm never gonna bully my impression, man. Like you gotta do this. I'm never gonna set my mouth for something for them. He, he owes me peace, so you gotta go up. So you actually put him in debt. I put mine in there. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the first time, not a wood, I have in it. Yeah, I have. I put mine in there. And how long have you been doing this for? Since I was 15. So how long is that now? Well, hey. 12, 13 years. You've been well, using the kids to carry that to follow. up hmm? to country OT for 12, 15 years? Mm -hmm. Now I've got nine, you know, like when I was 18, I had my own little youngest running around. And you've never been caught for that? No. Wow. 
No, at the end of the day, is they get cool, the youngest. What they're gonna get is I get cool. I'm a big man. The judge is gonna look at me and say, you're the guy that needs to go down. Oh, that's incredible. No. So, so what, so what, so what happens if they take that drug up to OT and, for example, they get robbed or they don't come back with you? What happens? Well, you know, uh, I get in debt forever. <laughs> I thought you get locked into that life when you go up there and you get robbed. I, sometimes that's what they, is that what they be talking about? These dudes in these dumbass masks? My bad. These dudes in these masks, um, they said they take them up, they, they put them in debt. That's how they do it. Give an example, yeah, those are you. Yeah, you're 16. I gave them two tax, yeah. The first tax comes back, good, Jay. Keys, no problem. The second tax, he lost. Now, because he's a youth, me and my boy discussed this and said, you know what? He didn't rob us, because that's the first thing that we said, he did not rob us. You know what I'm saying? We said, you know what, now, nah, he ain't smart enough for that. Cool, he must have fucked up. Alright, cool, you know what? Boom. Let's give him a blind. He then lost again, innit? So we sat him down, got him drunk, and I uh, took him in hospital. Yeah, simple. You know, that man took him in hospital, at the end of the day, you're losing me money. When you come into the treatment. Wait, he got him drunk first? Then put him in. I guess because what? Like, the liquor numbs the pain or something? Why they do that? Yeah, no, no. Well, when you come into the team, it's, it's not for little kids. You feel me? So if you're a little kid and you want to get involved, one thing you're doing is big man. I'm going to deal with you like a big man. So, so why little kids, though? Of all people that you could choose to use, you could have a grown man, you know, why is it? Impressionable minds. Particularly a little kid that he was choosing to use. Easy to manipulate. Yeah. Wow. And that could be a 15 year old kid. Yeah. I wonder if it was easy for him to manipulate that shirt over his body. That mug, tight the mug. That shit crazy. My bad. Well, let's focus. Well, he wants to act like a big man in it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put big money in his pocket, but in return, move like a big man. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, pay respect to the team. If, if I fucked up at those ages, I would have got punched up. I would have got dealt with by the, by the oldest that's sending me. So you're telling me this is almost like a cycle? You had, you had our... Yeah, that's chatting, like, the actual... You know, when you think about chatting, yeah, a lot of shot is here that are going to watch this and that, yeah, they're going to say, well, it's about the cats. But when I'm a big man, I can tell you, it's not just the cats, it's Jeff Dealers as well, innit? Because you get into that life, yeah, you're used to the money, and on top of that, you, you spend all this time, so you ain't got no education, you ain't got no jobs. You probably live in that mom's you like, or crashing at your boys, so you get caught in a cycle, aka trapped. You feel me? So that, that's what it is. And, 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 and how do you go about manipulating True. these young kids in terms of wanting this lifestyle? Because, I mean, by the sounds of things, it doesn't sound like a lifestyle that is really fun. I, mean, I, I feel like he's contradicting himself a little bit, though. And he's saying these kids, they want to be in it, but then he's saying I'm manipulating them to be in it. Which one is it? A little bit of both, or what's going on? Don't you just grab you and slap him off and see you going up there. I said I'm doing my thing. You just said you do, though. Yeah, yeah, I show, I show him what he wants. He wants girls, I bring girls around me. He wants money, I bring money around me. He wants love, because a lot of the youths ain't got fathers. A lot of the youths ain't got big brothers. He wants that, I treat him like that. The parents ain't there for them. Oh, wow, wow. So these kids that you're targeting are specifically, they don't have parents. They're lost. Yeah. They're lost. And what does that mean? That means uh, they, don't get, they don't get what they need, they don't get sorted out. They need to get sorted out. They get nothing around them that holds, holds them down. Yeah, they know. Get, they don't take the they, they ain't got no role models. Yeah. Like, I'm their role model, women. That's the rule. When the man is in school and he's coming home late, that's because he's with me, innit? Because he likes what he sees, innit? How I talk to him. Now, I, I'm not bullying him, man. Now, I'm showing him a path that could be better for him. You feel me? Now, man's is looking at me saying, you're, you're I'm teaching my son to sell drugs. Yeah, but that money's paying for your bills. You come and home and put money in your pocket, money. You feel me? But the trade-off is not... But looking, like, looking as a parent, the trade-off ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? As a parent, your kid's going out 
doing this, doing that. But they don't realize they putting their life at risk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Their future is at risk for, for a little short gratification. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no long-term gratification at this level of trapping. There's no long-term gratification. You know what I'm saying? You got to stand out, go above and beyond in the trap game to make your way all the way to the top, which is very few do that so. You know what I'm saying? Hey. What's going on, y'all? Thank you for the follow. You you come home and say you know you don't have to worry about me. I'm teaching how to be a man. Can I ask you a personal question? I will say this, though. Kind of like, trapping, some of the things you learn in, the, in that game, they really equate to the business world. So if you, like, if you, like, let's say, if you trapping through college or something, that's real life experience. I should be able to go get some credits applied for trapping. Like, this is real life. I'm really out here. You know what I'm saying? Looking for the bottom line. Hey. You know, going through ups, gains. What's going and, on, and, y'all? Damn, okay. Salute for the follow. Yeah. Did your parents know what you was up to at your age? I got caught at 16. My mom called me at 16. And what was the result? What happened when she was caught? Police. No, she, she called police on me, and I um, yeah, she called me with 16 grand in my account. Yeah, you was moving stupid anyway. She should have called the police on you. 16 grand in your bank account at 16 years old. The poli- What they were supposed to believe? The police was, you was putting trap money in your bank account? 16,000 pounds at f- 16 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And when you was OT, where did your mom think you was? Well, she seems to see for I'm a friend, but I was one of those rebellious ones. I'm always out, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, link it to me somewhere on, like, send, tell me where you sent the link to. Now, I took care of myself kind like of thing. Instagram or something. You know what I'm saying? I was all with my boys anyway, so it wasn't hard for me to disappear, you know? I mean, she asked little questions, but I could say I just stayed at my friends there for the week. And this thing called trapping, I mean... It seems quite glamorous and it's quite, it's quite a trend with, with amongst young people. What do you feel, or how do you feel, what do you think influences this so-called trap, OT, county line, <laughs> gangster, rapper lifestyle? Um, the money, innit? You know, I mean, in, what, when you say influence, you mean outside influences that, that yeah. make it, yeah? Uh, I say music then, innit? I'm not gonna say rappers, but I'll say what you listen to. Now, the selling of kind of left on it. Some of the teeth of drill music. Now, you know what I'm saying? You know what drill music is. You know what, what is that? Can you break down what drill music drill is? Drill music literally is ride out music. That's what it is. It's ride out music. So, if I'm listening to it, my dance move is, is riding out. If that makes sense. You know what I'm what saying? Is, what, is, what does riding out mean? Just going to off. Yeah, now, go on, go on for your ops. What does ops mean? Told him, hey! hey. Go on for, for, I ain't going to lie. He getting in depth with this interview. He want every little like explanation to every word. This is if you know nothing about nothing, like this is a good one to watch. Position, yeah, from the opposition, and it like whoever's rising in you, taking them out. But that almost sounds like a sport. You know what? It's got, it's, it's got the adrenaline of a sport. It's got the adrenaline. That's stuff where a lot of people get stuck in it, and a lot of the youth get drawn into it. You know what I'm saying? Because. Well, when, you, the, the addiction. Men, when you have a plan for the Friday, you get a kind of adrenaline. You know what I'm saying? The man's not a nice You know what I'm saying? It's a rush. You feel me? As keen as I was to speak to the oldest, I was so keen to speak to the young man. Them. I couldn't help but feel that the older man them were marketing this, making it seem glamorous. I know that there's more to this, and I am going to find out. Filming. Gang, the oldest, refused to be filmed with the young G's. One thing's for sure, there's a total disregard for these young children. So Where the hell did he get pure Hennessy from? The young G's. Do say, okay, turn me up. Jack Daniels, throw it away. One thing's for sure, there's a total... 
Pure Hennessy, right here. Pure white Hennessy. Okay. To disregard for these young children. So, taking it back, I just want to ask you, how did it start? How did you get into this trapper, county land, drug dealing, lifestyle? Did, who approached you? Did someone approach you? How did it start? Also known, what I would call as the grooming process. You always have to start, you know, from the process. There's always a process you have to go through. Me, I met this older. Obviously, I was with him for a good couple of years. And then uh, he went to prison. So I took his life. What's going on, yo? I no money Appreciate the follow. Myself. And then, obviously, you have to build your own empire after that. What do you mean by build your own empire? You can be insecure as young kids get them. But how old could they be? 15, 14 more. They could be as young as 14 as yeah, Of course, because you have to do that for the money. You know, you don't want to get in that shit, man. Send them up there. Make the people to come back there to eat him. You get them to get right to come back. How, how much? How much? I don't understand why they need to blur their voices out. Like, just the face mask would be cool enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? How much are they, are they making from going up to country? They're making up to a hundred pounds a day. At 13 years old? At 13 years old. So if you're going to go to a 13 year old and then tell him, listen, you can make a hundred pounds a day. And then what, do a nine to five and get a minimum wage? What's he going to pick? Of course he's going to pick the a hundred pounds because the government are not doing enough. So you can go to a grown man and do that as well. You know what I'm saying? 14, 15 year olds, can, can they work in the UK? Do, you, do they need a work permit? I know under the age of 16, you can't work without a work permit in the United States. So, uh, but I'm not sure about that there. What, what about his parents? What, don't you think about what his parents for? His mum, his dad, his carer, her carer. But like, what about the parents? Where did the mm -hmm. parents come into it? We don't even talk about that, you see. We don't talk about that. We don't talking about that. It's about the money. The young bucks want to make the money. Then they come to us. You know what I'm saying? The parents don't have nothing to do with that. They don't want them in it. If they get in our way, they will take the child from them. They, they keep disappear. They keep moving us. They turn the kid against them. You know what I'm saying? You take them in as almost like family. Yeah, well, yeah of course. We can look after them like family because at the end of the day, they wouldn't be they are the ones. They are the ones that are getting your money. They're the ones getting your supply in. They're the ones that are needed. And obviously it's because of the government and because they can't do shit for them. That's why they always turn around and come to us. Because we can provide everything that they need. We provide them with money, women, everything. At 13 years old. At 13 years old, 14, 15. They gas in this. Whatever, when they want to come to us, and if they're ready to come to us, and if they want to make some serious money. But if they don't play around, then they're good. You got to think about the hours. The last time I heard about this, or the last time we did a doc documentary on this, Think about the hours. He said a hundred a day, right? But he said, or you can go work a minimum wage job and get less. Think about that. If you're working county, right? How many hours are you working? You're putting in 15, 16 hour days if you work in county. 16 divided by a hundred is what? Let's do the math calculator. You ain't that good at math now. 100 divided by 16, 625 an hour. No, sir. <laughs> you feel me? Absolutely not. But, you know, a little kid not thinking about how many hours. You, th you, you, you telling them, oh, yeah, you showed them this money. You showed them these girls. You showed them, you showed them these cars, these jewelry. But they really put in 16 hour days and only making six dollars and 25 cents an hour. And they're, 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 they don't got time to be seeing none of the stuff that you've already showed them in that process. They don't got time. They'll never see none of that. Not at least not for, for the first two, three years. You feel me? Because they don't get no days off and they work 16 hours a day. It's incredible. No, lastly, if. Anything can be done to stop county lines. What, what can be done to stop county lines? Young kids going up to sell, selling drugs for, for the older peers, older men. It's so simple if you, if you look at it this way. Literally, if the government can do more for the... Like, let me tell you one thing. Sometimes we have youths that come to our country 
I mean, you won't believe how clever they are. But the reason that they're out of the country is because of the government can't do enough for them, giving them the right opportunities. Once you pass the GC, don't pass the GCSEs, they don't have nothing to do, they're so straight, man. They don't know. But even the ones that do pass the GCSEs, they don't still end up doing the same shit. No. So, lack, so because of lack of, lack of parental supervision, mm. ed good education, lack of resources, mm. opportunities, these are the factors that are causing these youngers to come into your radar. Yeah, and you always, yeah, you always yeah, see these fucked up areas that haven't got money, but I ain't providing shit. That's where all the trouble is happening. Social disorganisation, areas like Hackney, places like Brixton, Peckham, West London, South London, East London, Newton, exactly. Ilford, where money is scarce and opportunities are absent. These young, vulnerable kids are coming up and are joining your gang. Exactly. They're coming out of their house, seeing rats all over their ends and that. What are you going to do? Of course they're going to come to us to make money. Wow. Obviously you got to think of, you know, what they're thinking right now. They're thinking they didn't let you get out of the hood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what they all think for like us. But you they don't know the struggle that we go through. So if someone's caught drug dealing in your turf in your area, well, what, what, what could happen? What would happen? What, what's the get on site, man? No snacking, fam. They're what, taking our fees. They're not. They're showing our guard, no playing around. They have to feed their families, get me? This is a piece for us, fam. Don't get straight. fucking just straight up. They're just no coming talking. to take what, what, what ours, ain't it? They're coming to take what ours. That's our turf. Why you come and sell food in our turf? At the end of the day, whatever they have is going to be our profit at the end of the day. It's going to be our profit, so let them come to the ends. Because we're strapped up. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready man. Don't know what we have. Do you feel like the police are helpful in terms of tackling gangs and serious shoe violence? A bull bit. They're full of dickheads. They're full of dickheads. They're dangerous. Straight. With the serious on street, so they just try to kill us. Yeah. They try to kill us on sight. They try to do things to kill us on sick and innit. They would tell us if they had guns, they would kill us in a second if they wanted to. Straight. Straight, if they had a gun on them, I know they would want to kill us. What could be done to tackle county lands? Would you think that anyone, anywhere could do anything to s stop young kids being sent up to Cardiff, Manchester, Birmingham, Luton to sell drugs for older men? Listen, this is how kids are these days, okay? These, they all want to chase money. What's the fastest way of making money for us and the kids, 15 year olds? Would you tell me what the fastest way you think? Whipping this up, giving it to the kids in the country house. Two hours, whip that up, you're making cash. Two bucks, two hours straight. Three there you bucks. go. You can make two grand in two hours. Mm -hmm. There you go, yeah. easy, man. Easy, that's easy, that's light. Yeah, well, you learn, you why not? Put this up the kid's ass and you're done. That, that goes up a kid's ass? Yeah. There you go. This? Yeah. And this is a key to all of it. Wow. Oh, shit. Verbage is crazy. It's money, and sometimes you gotta swallow it and shit it out after. Of course, man. You have to swallow it. Mm -hmm. Shit it out. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing police can do about it because in today's, how it is today, everyone, everyone wants money. money. Everyone, everyone. Everyone wants money. So, us, we're gonna do what we have to do to get that money, which is this. And the youngers will always come to us because they need that money too. Can I ask you a question? Say one of these young kids have gone up country with that. Um, and they've lost it, what would happen if they've lost your drugs? Then they get in trouble. Trouble, get trouble, trouble, trouble. What yeah, that we need to work out. again to get the pee back in. Mm -hmm. Straight man, man. you have to do that. Yeah. If someone, uh, see if it's someone that's taking off them, you know what I'm saying? Someone taking off them, they have to go get back. Me. Go get back, we go get back with them. And how I'm concentrating hardest, I have not concentrated this hard. To understand the like list like to understand what people are saying. It's it's because they muffling them and trying to make their voice unrecognizable, but then I'm trying to read at the same time and still listen. I gotta choose one. How how would you get it back? Give them the equipment, send them up this one. What, 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 what's the equipment? Oh, a little whip of dinner, you get me two boot in, three boot in, quick time, give them a little ramsey yeah, motion. Get in that ramsey, make them go up, get our good stuff. They kinda get it back then. It's not, it's not Either they have to work for it or don't Because a good, a, a good question, and I mean an important question I ask myself is where do these drugs come from? How, they, how, how does 100, 150 kilograms of cocaine, heroin 
get into England, into the borders, month in, month out. Government. It's the only kid, it's the government. The government, you, you think the government are, are ones that bring the drugs in? Because they're the ones in charge of the border. Okay, you try now taking something so small. I'll give you one of these little things. You try to take down the airport and try to cross the airport. I can guarantee you will be arrested and gone. Where do you think this whole kilo and many more kilos we've seen coming from? It's the government, fam. And what about guns? Where, uh, where the guns come from? Do you guys same thing? Same thing, bro. Because I, I want to. I, I don't know about the drugs, but the guns for sure. <laughs> I want to know where do these guns come from? Where do these drugs come from? Not about who's distributing them. I want to know how do they get into my country and how do they get into my streets? How are they in my communities and why are they amongst my young people? I want to know where are these coming from. Where is this coming from every month? To answer, to, to, to answer your question. Listen, the government are after money. Like I said, everyone's after money. They're doing it for the profit. They care about They're not going to let you know. But they're trying to get money. We're trying to get money. So if we need to buy the gun for safety, if we want to get the drugs to make money, then obviously that's what we have to do, is it? We expect us to live. No benefits, man. man. Fuck benefits, man. man. You can't do that. That's wrong. That's all wrong. No. What's that? What's it like? 200 pounds a week? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> more than 10 times that. 15 more. minutes, Jeez. 200 pounds. In 15 minutes, you can make 200 pounds. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. easy. That's jokes for us, man. Joking. And these kids that go missing for, how long do they go missing for? Keep them for a good two. I think he's doing good with this interview. The interview guy. Because you got to literally go into these interviews and play dumb. And ask every single question get clarification on every single thing so so it, it seems more in depth you know what I'm saying for the average viewer that's looking that's never you know had this experience in real life they can like kind of put themselves in their shoes for a second where are they in a, a building a drug user's house where would these kids be these <laughs> <laughs> whatever We'll just go, go to the yard and tell listen, we use the yard for a good two weeks, week. And obviously, they're not going to say shit. Because when the buses out there and they don't know where the buses are. Once you're in it, you can't get out. Well, well, what if it was your little brother or your cousin? How would you feel, how, how would you feel about if someone else was doing what you guys are doing to your, to your brother or your nephew or uncle or cousin? Good question. Listen, when you have no emotions, when you're going to do the madness that we're doing, you think we give two shits about these little youths and what their brothers are going through? Oh. Sister, it's some good truth, I'm telling you straight. Um, how did it all start for you in terms of, again, this trap, drug dealing, county land lifestyle, this this fast life, this gangster lifestyle? How did it start for you? Oh. <sighs> Me personally, it starts always at home. It always starts at home. It starts with. No father figure, you know, it starts with the same old, seeing your mother struggle, trying to help out within the house, trying to be the man in the house. Because, you know, father wasn't there to, to give you that, 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 oh, that set, to be the man, to be the king. To this be. guy's giving us a real, 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 you know what I'm saying? Let, let, let me not play it up for the cameras. Let me truthfully tell you where it came from. You know, to have emotions and not be emotional, you know what I'm saying? So, in a way, we're finding ourselves while we're trying to make money on the streets. And you can't get a job because you're even too young to get a job at the time. Because you don't know, hustling and trafficking that can start at any age. No matter what age you are, that can start at any age. What age? Like, what's the youngest it can start at? It can start 10, 11. 10? The only way, exactly. If you're raising a family, if you're raising a family, if you know what you're doing, just push you more for you won't know what you're doing. Same thing, you know? You've got to have a, an older figure, maybe not a brother or a dad, but you have to have an older figure to give you that man status or when you're out there. Nah, man, and that's cool. And you roll at a young age, you have to defend yourself, forcing the kid to do anything that's necessary to stay alive or to keep his drugs. So that wouldn't him to go to jail or that gives him a criminal record. And what does that do? When he gets older, that stops him from getting a job. And 
Now they just seeing that as another person. No. I, I I believe that this is the smartest person in the in the in the room. Uh, out of these dudes, this gotta be the smartest person. Before the Lord doing this and you see before you can't get a job, but you know certain of the reasons why certain people got criminal records. Have you applied? Have you tried to apply for jobs? Oh, it's not even that's the thing with me. Firstly, he hasn't even got that far. Like they wouldn't even interview me. Like I send my CVs out there. I can even when I'm sending my CVs out, I come with terms of like you know proper looking part to get the job, you know. But then even that alone, it just it doesn't it doesn't. It's like they don't understand. It's like they just look at you and just think, nah, it's not the usual way, the usual is it? So they're trying to look for something special. It's like every job when you take a job, they're trying to look for something special. Of course, when they're looking at a youth as well, they're thinking, we don't know, you might be a you know criminal, might be a stealer. It's weird. That's why certain people. You know, that's why you see in certain chicken shops, there's not a lot of people in there working. But if you go to a chicken shop and send your CV out, yeah, they wouldn't they even know you. And that's just a chicken shop, that's a law, it's a woman. What, well, is trapping the only way out of the hood? Is trapping the only way out of the hood? It's not even the only way out of the hood, it's the only way, full stop. It's the only way, full stop. Only way, full stop. Only way, full stop. It's the only way you get it. Full stop. That's the only way, like, if you. If you want to make it to a, a certain status, you want to make it to a certain level. And that's crazy, man, because it really, really don't be no neighborhood heroes. The only heroes you really see in a neighborhood, if you, you know, if you're in a certain neighborhood, is the drug dealers. Like, dang, it ain't no doctors coming out the hood. It ain't, it ain't no, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no doctors, no therapists, no... You know, no, no, nobody. And if it is, they're not coming back to the hood. They gone. They're done. They're not coming back talking about, yeah, I was in the hood. I made it out. You can be like me too. You don't, you don't got to go this route. No, you only see in the drug dealers. You only see in the steppers. Of course, you you can only you can only have a hero if you've seen them before. The, the only people you can look up to is the people that you physically see or know about. As shocked as I was, I couldn't help but think how many other kids are trapped in this lifestyle. Right now, I'm on my way to go and meet a mother of a child who's been found in OT country on numerous occasions. So let's go meet her. I just want to be there. That's my bad. So this is the space we're using. Mum's downstairs. Mum is really worried, as you can imagine. She's scared. She wants to remain, remain anonymous. And this space allows us to do that. How you doing, Ali? How you doing? Thanks for your time. As you know, we're here doing a project. How <laughs> they cut, bro? Smooth out. <laughs> oh, that's what that is? That's the name of this shop? The Kenne... Kenne oh, the Kennehans. Wait, what are you talking about? your time today um, as you know we're doing a documentary on county lines exploring OT country and child grooming and exploitation um, I just want, got a couple of questions to ask you and um, the first question really how did you feel when you found that your child was going OT when it was found in country how did that make you feel very hungry god damn <laughs> I gotta move again Oh, okay, we ain't got to move that much. All right, that's cool. So, I have some my thoughts is about my son who to OT, looking for him, disappeared every night, every day, don't know where your child is, and some stranger take your son or daughter and take them to OT, to do whatever they ask them to do and they have to do it because they are scared for their lives 
and they don't sometimes these people are strangers to you this is definitely from a mom's perspective and take them ot and do whatever they ask them to do and they have to do it because they are scared for their own life and sometimes these people are strangers to your children That's definitely a mother's perspective because what we know already is this child has met this person. He's seen the lifestyle. It's been offered to him. He's been around enough to know that some of the ins and outs and, and develop the relationship, a trusting relationship. Then that OT stuff came into play. But this is cool to have a mom's perspective and what her mindset really is and the innocence of her child. Because they, 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 I'm going to play devil's advocate. Not really, but I'm going to say it. Like Some of these some of these people know exactly what they're getting themselves into. You know what I'm saying? Some of these children or some of these OT steppers, they know what they're doing. They know what's happening. She would dream. I mean, where, did you, did, how long did it take you to find where he was? It take me like six days. six days to know where my son was. And when I get to know where my son was, it's from the police. And then all we know, we get a call from the police saying, your son is in OT, get arrested by the police. Wow. I mean, that must be such a difficult, difficult situation to be able to handle that your, your, your precious son, your only child is, 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 is in a place that he's never been before with criminals and in a dangerous place that that must be one of the most difficult things to, to to live with very devastating my family my husband we don't sleep we don't eat all we're thinking about what will become of my son because he have a future and then right now we don't know what his future hold for him he used to go to school try to have a degree now he's scared he's afraid to walk on the street He's afraid of people, or he's saying that he knows that he doesn't know whether he'll be going to prison, who is looking for him. At the moment, he's very scared for his life. So this is like life after county lines? Like how the PTSD of it all? I guess, yeah, for sure. The kid got caught, lost, probably lost the work, you know what I'm saying? So these dudes probably looking for him. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, it is a mind manipulation to go back on what I said. It, it, their mind is still being manipulated and played with, even if they do come to them and know what's going on. They don't fully know what's going on. They don't know the extent of it all. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of other kids that are experiencing this, that go missing for periods of five to ten days and their parents are not known. Their parents are not known where they are. What can be done to stop this county lines, OT, country, in essence, child trafficking? Well, the government oh, man, that's crazy, because I was going to say that earlier. Remember when I paused the video and looked up? I was going to say, well, isn't Andrew Tate going through a lot of like human trafficking thing? Isn't this the same thing? Couldn't the charge be human trafficking? And have a lot to do with helping this situation because we cannot do it on our own we are nobody to do it on our own all we can try to do is to speak to our children but these people have big influence on your children they try to tell them we will give you this we will give you that but they want to live the high life and risking your children's life into the high life society so the government now need to help parents to try to overthrow these people to um, secure your children, and then the government need to expose these people, who they are, their name, their faces, let the public know who these people are, and shame them, give them some harsh punishment, so that they know their place. If they want to do, they have the lifestyle, the high lifestyle, they need to do it on their own, not with people, children, you cherish them, you send them to school, you try to give them a life in this world, and these people take your children and mess the children, your children for life. So the government, we are crying out loud for the- Yeah, no, she's, she's spitting facts. Because it's not like these uh, adults, when these children come to them, they turn them away. It's like, nah, okay, cool. 
Let me double down on whatever you're thinking. The government to help us of these criminals from persuading your children and using your children as mules to carry their drugs for them. They need to do it on their own. But the government need to try their best enough to stop these people from using our children. My bad. That's powerful. But how? In what ways could they could practically? There is so many ways the government can do that by having um, they do a lot of searching on the road, but the homes, they have different places where these people have these drugs trafficking. True. They need to do more, um, put more police to search the homes, more raids and stuff like that because... That That's illegal though. They gotta have a reason to go up in them cribs. So if the public is not, you know, being diligent and opening their eyes and paying attention, then they can't go just barge into nobody's crib. Unless they have a reason. That is where it's starting from the homes where they have the different plants, where they have the different factories. And they know the places where they have to go to raid these people and to put a stop into this mess. Because right now, they're this world is in turmoil. People, because I even watched a documentary yesterday saying one person every five seconds is dying because of these drugs. I was looking at that program last night. And it's very bad. If five, one person out of five seconds are dying, this is bad. Because it's taking place within Manchester, Luton, Birmingham, within, across the whole country, it's hard for, for agencies to work together to be able to identify this because this is taking place without, without their remit, essentially. It's happening in other boroughs, so there needs to be better multi-agency partnership. Um, you touched on some fantastic points. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible just to... I, I can't... I can't, I can't even explain or understand how you would feel knowing that he was brought up in, was he brought up in a single parent, mum and dad? No, both mum and dad. Both my, both parents? Both parents and he's my only child. I don't know whether I'm going to lose him for a few years, if he's going to prison or what's going to happen right now. All we have sleepless nights, he himself has sleepless nights and it's, it's like it's messing up the home. It's messing up our home right now. Like there is no love or friendship anymore in the house. Always a fight, always a quarrel, always scared for our lives. And even my son is afraid of going to school. He's afraid of meeting people. He's afraid of doing things that he loves at the moment. It's tough. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, that's tough. Well, I don't even know what to say. What an interview. Oh my God. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Dude is giving me real Danny Dyer vibes right now. Powerful stuff. Just finished interviewing a mother who's experienced and lived the trauma of her son being found in the country. I'm gonna go and do the other interview now um, with another young man who was found uh, in country OT in a trap house, a vulnerable a young man that was found. Damn, he got all angles. He got the, the he got the the adult the 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 olders, the youngers in the trap house. He got the mom's perspective, the the mother's perspective, which is you know pretty powerful. And now he got the the child in a substance misuse house. Not even gonna lie, he covered all bases with this one. Oh damn, right Thank in front you so much for your time. Um, as you know, we're doing a documentary on Candy Lines. Let's get straight into it. How did, where did it start from? How, how, how old was you when you first started trapping? I was about 13 to be honest. 13, 14. 13 years old? Yeah, straight away. 13 years old was when you first started? Yeah. That's young, man. I know, but they came to me young. So who came to you? All the all the wrong ends came to me. They offered me big things, money. At that age, yeah, man, I like that stuff, kind of stuff, man. So them in the cars, wrong ends, the money, the girls, why not? So that's that, that's what I would call grooming. I would call that grooming when you've got someone using money, cars, jewelry, 
clothes, that image as a bait to draw in young vulnerable men. For sure, that's, that's heavy manipulation. And women to sell drugs for them, that's what I would call that. What, how do you feel about that? Yeah, this, they took me in, they took me in that family. They taught me the way, they gave me money, they gave me jobs. Yeah, I was, I was a guy in ends now. But I knew these men, and they brought me in, I was a guy in ends. And, and what, what kind of things was you doing when you was going country? I was there, I was bold, making them, them, selling their stuff for them, making the money, coming back. It matched you, innit? And, 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 wow, at 13 years old? 13 years old, I was out on road. You was out of London in a far place, like? Way out, out. But at 13, and where, what about your parents? What did your parents think about where you was? Was your parents like, so where, how long was you gone for? It's close yeah, as hell, my boy. I used to tell them I've been a friend for a few days. Yeah, it's my understanding. And they never called the parents to find out where their children was? No, no, no. Your parent, at 13 years old, let you go out. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty typical in the hood. <laughs> in these, like, these neighborhoods. I think my mom asked some questions, but like, I had friends, like, they could just do whatever they wanted to. They could like slide and go there and go there. I had to go tell my mom what was going on. Or maybe I didn't and I just did. Nah, I had to, for sure. <laughs> Three, four, five days, and didn't check with the parent of where you were staying. That's incredible. That is incredible. At 13 years old. Wow. So, so, so how did you get to this point where where you are now? You know what? I got used to over the years. I didn't get caught, so I went back. Saw so more stuff for money, for my car, my cars, my grips. Yeah, I, got, I like the last one. Get me. I go up there. You get me? And um, what, what, what would be a day-to-day -day routine for you? Well, no. When you was in country, OT, in a trap house, what, 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 would you, what, what are some of the things you would be doing, some of the people you would be seeing, maybe some of the people you would be around? I saw substance misusers, nitties, people in nitties again. Nitties. Oh my God. Jeez, the worst type of customer is a crack. <laughs> it's someone who is strung out on a Class A that is injected or smoked. That is the worst type of, you know what I'm saying? And at 13, he having to be around them all day, every day. Yo, oh my God. This is the worst. Cats. Cats. They used to come to the yard now, told me they want to some guys, used to sort them out. The guy that I was staying at, the user, I used to line him a little sign. He used to let me stay there for how long I wanted to get him. So they managed stuff to do. I told him what to do. Can I, can I ask you a personal question? Go on. How would you feel if that was someone that you cared about, someone that you loved, someone that was close to you? As a human being, how would you feel? How, how would that make you feel? My family, never. Never my family. That's why I got easy to do it for me. I don't care about them. If they get bad, yes, yeah, on them, it's not on me. But never my family, man. Oh, so he's still involved. Wait, my family, never my family. That's why I've got these youths doing it for me. I don't care about that. If they get bagged, it's on them. It's not on me. Come on, man. Never my fam. I'm thinking like he coming from a prop, a place where I was roped in as a youngin. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to do it. Now I figured it out and I'm not doing it no more. Nah, I'm still in here is what he's saying. What was life like growing up for you? To be honest, I came from a good home. A good home, man. Church going, parents went to church, everything, good education, but it was the money. It was the money. There was no money in the household, get me? I didn't get what I wanted. Growing up, I saw other kids with what they wanted, and I didn't have that kind of stuff. So obviously, I had to do it for myself. The always brought me in, and now I'm up, and now I'm up there. So, how did your parents feel when they found out what, what your lifestyle was like? That's the thing, man. Comparing yourself to others, It'll drive you to do some, some wild stuff. What you was really up to. You know what, my mom was dead. That's why I'm a stress to my kids. Hey, don't compare what you got to what other people got. You know what I'm saying? They road that they walk is different currently. We'll get there in time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take your time. Don't do nothing out of your character. 
interested, man. She didn't, she never thought that I would get into that kind of stuff, but obviously she couldn't do nothing with her older. She couldn't do nothing. Just as a parent, bro, you just can't be naive, bro, to the fact that your kids could possibly be, you know what I'm saying? To, to the fact that your kids could possibly be having thoughts like, man, I need to go get money. How can I go get money, man? I'm finna start. I'm finna start. To, well, their mind are their minds are not ours. You know what I'm saying? You gotta put yourself in your kids' shoes. Yes, we are adults, but we were once kids, and we remember. You know what I'm saying? So when you put yourself in your kid's shoes and fi try to, you know, figure out what's going on, it kind of make it a little easier, man. You got to explain to them stuff, man. That's why when you don't, when kids don't commute, like some parents don't think they need to communicate with their kids. Yes, you do. Communicate. Don't hit them with the don't worry about it. I'm grown. You not. Stay in your place. No. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my, I was, I was Telling them the real to keep them away from a lot of situations. Setting my routines already. You just have to accept it. Look, if you could, if if you could give a message to the young people, if you could share a message in terms of not what to do and how to avoid this lifestyle, what would you say to them? Listen, they don't want to get into this. They could get into this. But what I'm saying, if you're in education, stay in education, get me will all come after time. It's time, that's the thing, to be patient. Told you. Well, I'll just tell you, he's saying the same thing. When, uh, stuff will come, just be patient. Don't do anything out of your character. And if I could rewind time, I would pay more attention in school. Because I could have, I was just bored in school. I told y'all my IQ is, you know, off the charts and things of that nature. So what they was doing wasn't interesting to me. You know what I'm saying? Even when I got to college, like I did some college, like even when I got there, it was like, yo, this shit is so ridiculous. Like, why am I here? Like, I'm talking about when I was in college, like for like a semester and a half, and I was bored out of my mind. Every test was easy. All the homework was, it was so simple. It was like, y'all finessing people in college. Y'all really getting over. I, that's just my opinion. Like, y'all really finessing people. I do not need to be here to learn this stuff. And I already knew all of it, most of it. Like, it's like, yo. And if anyone could do anything anywhere to stop county lands, child trafficking, OT, trapping, drug dealing, is there anything that anyone could do to stop this? Well, I guess that's what they used to do. Get them active. Don't keep them up crazy. Nah, I ain't got ADHD. Always, there's some kids you don't want to go to school. Get something else for them to do, you get me? That's what I'm feeling saying, you get me? Like, youth clubs and that, that'll be good for them, though. More places to go, more places to exercise, maybe your skills to develop talent. Of course, of course. To build a career, more opportunities. I've just spoken to a young man that's just explained how he got into a lifestyle of drug dealing, county lines, OT. And it's shocking to hear the, the reoccurring factors of deprivation, of poverty, of low income, being factors that are affecting our communities and our young people, and forcing them and allowing them to come into the hands of some of London's most dangerous criminals. Sending them to places that they've never been before for periods of 10 to 15 days for dangerous men. And parents not knowing where they are, schools not knowing where they are, care homes not knowing where their children are. Something needs to be done. Change needs to happen. Ali, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for opening up your restaurant and allowing us. Parents are caught up in working, making money. Okay, Ali. Uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments because this is definitely still a thing going on right now. and It's still relevant to this day. Um, and this, this got almost a million views five years ago. And he still dropped some bangers, but they are interviews. Gotta go back to these documentary style, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.